viewed other videos in this series, you already know that cybersecurity is becoming more and more important to the safe and reliable operation of your plant. Many companies already use firewalls to isolate the plant and enterprise networks. What's so bad about this approach? Aren't these networks already protected? In this video, we'll explore the types of cybersecurity issues we often see in plant networks and learn how these issues can impact plant operations in spite of these firewalls. Most cybersecurity issues fall into three major categories. First of all, control networks are full of what we would call soft targets, devices that are extremely vulnerable to disruption through their network interface. The PCs in many plants run for weeks or months without any security updates, and some even operate without any antivirus tools. In addition, many of the controllers in these networks were designed in an era when cybersecurity was not a concern. As a result, many of these devices can be disrupted by malformed network traffic, or even by high volumes of correctly formed traffic. Second, many control networks have multiple pathways through which cybersecurity threats can enter the plant. These pathways often bypass existing security measures in the plant, and some of them don't even appear on a network diagram. For example, laptop computers that are carried in and out of plants, or USB keys that can move from one PC to another. These can easily bring malware into the plant and rapidly spread it from one system to another. Third, many networks are implemented as large, flat networks with no isolation at all between unrelated subsystems. This means that if a problem does occur in one part of the plant, it can spread very quickly to other unrelated subsystems and even to remote plant sites. Let's look at an example of how these problems can start and spread so quickly. This is a simplified diagram of a typical control system, where the PLCs and sensors are connected to a control network that is isolated from the main plant network by dual-homed PCs. The plant network, in turn, is isolated from the enterprise network by a firewall. Finally, the enterprise network is isolated from the internet by another firewall. If properly configured, the firewall on the plant network will be able to stop cybersecurity threats that originate from the internet or the enterprise network. But what happens if a contractor brings a laptop into the plant and that laptop has a virus on it? One of the things that malware frequently does is to begin scanning the network, looking for other vulnerable PCs that it can infect. This scanning behavior can fill the network with so much unwanted traffic that there is no bandwidth available for legitimate traffic to pass. This can cause many systems in the plant network to lose their network connections and fail. But it gets worse it's very likely that the virus will eventually find a vulnerable PC somewhere in the plant network. All it takes is one. When this vulnerable PC is infected, it too will start scanning all the networks to which it is connected. Dual-homed PCs used to be regarded as an asset because they provided some measure of isolation, but it becomes clear that in the new era of PC-based malware, they are a liability because the malware can attack both networks. Pretty soon, we begin to lose visibility to our critical PLCs and may even see some PLCs crash due to the scanning behavior of the malware. It may take only minutes until the entire plant goes down. In addition, it's very likely that we could infect other facilities since our control network includes connections to an equipment vendor for remote diagnostics and also to a partner organization with whom we share telemetry information. The firewall was doing its job just fine but it was helpless to prevent this incident because the source of the threat was already inside the plant. Let's look at how the failure of an Ethernet switch in the control network can impact the operation of the plant. When routers or switches are misconfigured or fail, they can often generate large amounts of broadcast or multicast traffic called a network storm. This storm can have the same widespread devastating effects as malware, specifically multiple connections failing network-wide due to congestion and even PLC failure due to vulnerabilities in their network interface. The outcome is similar to other types of incidents. Network communication is lost and vital plant subsystems are impaired or fail completely. The firewall cannot mitigate this type of failure. Protection at the perimeter of the network is just not effective against the many security threats that can impact our plant. There are many pathways of entry that can completely bypass the known perimeter, and many of the threats originate inside the plant network. 
We need security solutions that will harden the plant so it can continue to operate safely and productively even in the face of cybersecurity incidents. In the next video in this series, we'll talk about security strategies that work on the plant floor. Contact your Belden Hirschman representative today and get Tofino security solutions working for you. Don't wait. The time to act is now.